Jesse Lissenden with GlideFast Consulting, and today I'm going to be giving an introduction to the ServiceNow Automated Test Framework. In this tutorial, I will cover a brief overview, some considerations for implementing ATF, running an out-of-the-box quick start test, interpreting the test results, and maintaining ATF during clones. With ServiceNow ATF, you can create and run repeatable automated tests to verify the functionality of your ServiceNow applications and features. ATF tests can be run periodically as scheduled or on demand after system changes. Think about every time you upgrade your instance. ATF can provide consistent documented testing and save hours of hand testing. If you are implementing ATF for the first time, there are some considerations to keep in mind. ATF is only intended for use in sub-production environments, and preferably it should be run off hours. This is because ATF rolls back any changes that made at the end of each test, so there is some risk for data loss on record changes made asynchronously outside of ATF during the testing window. Tests need to be run in a desktop browser window without interruption. And lastly, ATF is not intended for test-driven development. This is because components need to already exist in your instance in order to configure ATF steps for them. To run a test, first you will need to enable ATF test execution. This property is disabled by default so that tests will not be run on production instances. To enable test execution on a subprod instance, go to Automated Test Framework, Administration, Properties. The first property will allow you to execute tests and test suites, and the second property will allow you to schedule test suites if you want them to be run periodically. I already have both properties enabled, so let's take a look at some quick start test suites. For this demonstration, I'm going to be taking a look at the Incident Management Test Suite, but for a list of all available quick start tests, refer to the ServiceNow documentation. In order to use a quick start test suite or an individual quick start test, you will need to copy it. Quick start tests are read only and inactive so that you don't modify the original record. If you haven't already copied it, a UI action to do so will appear up here. But since I've already copied it, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my copy of the Incident Management Test Suite. For the sake of time, I'm going to run one test individually. Before we run the test, let's take a look at some of these test steps. The test starts out by impersonating an ATF specific user. It inserts a new incident record, opens the incident record, clicks a UI action to create a change from the incident, and validates that the change was created successfully. If you're creating a new ATF test, it is best practice to start out by impersonating an ATF specific user or creating a new user within the test to impersonate that will be rolled back at the end. This helps mitigate some of the risk of rolling back record changes made outside of ATF during the testing window. It is also best practice to validate any records that were created or updated during the test. Let's go ahead and run the test. You will be prompted to select or create a new client test runner. This is the browser window in which the test will be executed and it needs to remain open for the duration of the test. This is the client test runner window. You can watch the test execute in real time. Screenshots of each step are also saved to the test results. For an overview of the test in progress, you can navigate to the main window. When the test is complete, you can use the button here to go to the result. Looking at the test result record, you can see that this test completed successfully. 
And this record will be retained for 60 days by default with an option to retain it indefinitely. There's information about the browser the test was run in, which is important for compatibility testing. And you can view more details about each test step in the step results related list. Let's take a look at the results for a failed test. This is a test that I've already run. You can see right away that the status is failure and it gives you information on the failing step. In this case, it was unable to find a UI action and there's also a screenshot included of the failure. Note that in the step results, any steps that would have occurred after the failure are skipped. Keep in mind that quick start test suites and the individual tests are configured for out of the box applications and demo data. If you need to reconfigure quick start tests to work with your instance, you will need to make those changes to your copies of the tests. Before we end, I want to touch quickly on maintenance because it may not be intuitive compared to other applications. Even though ATF tests should not be run on production instances, it is currently considered best practice to promote ATF changes to production using update sets. This will ensure that ATF is preserved during clones. ServiceNow support has stated that ATF tables are not designed to be transferred to the target instance using the data preserver. Because of this, it is important that the test and test suite execution, as well as the scheduled test suite execution properties, remain disabled on the production instance. I hope you found this introduction to the automated test framework useful. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more ServiceNow content.